Muslim 27 67. Let me read it for you. When it will be the day of resurrection, Allah will deliver to every Muslim a Jew or a Christian and say, that is your rescue from hellfire. Islam, Islam promotes the sacrifice, the sacrifice of others for your salvation. For your salvation. Wait a moment. Yeah, and I told him that I will answer that question, but I decide when, please. Hey, I'm preaching because I want to preach. Okay. Okay. You have discussed with Siraj, and I enjoy your discussion with him. But at the point I want to ask, you seem to present a case whereby it is the intention and the will of God that Jesus should come to the world to die for our sins. So I want to ask a question. When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he was praying to God, could it be possible to let this call pass over me, not as my will, but your will should be done? I want to ask you, from that, from that prayer, did God answer his prayer or not? Yes, because he decided to do the will of the Father, despite he didn't like the idea of going to the cross. Now, so the, 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 the prayer of Jesus was that he should be saved from death. He didn't want to die. Again, I am pushing the question to you, did God answer the prayer or not? Can you quote again the second part of the prayer? He said, thy will should be done. He said, not as my will, but the will should be done. Exactly. So, so you the, have the answer. So what is the will of God? To crush him. To kill him, to, for him to die. Yes. Now, if that is the case, I want the listener to go to the book of John, chapter 8, from verse 38 to 44. Okay, read there, it. When the Jews were planning to execute Jesus, when they were about to kill him, Jesus was, Jesus made them to understand that the will of the person they are trying to carry out is the will of the devil. That was what Jesus said. Because Jesus told them point blank that you are trying to carry out the will of your father, the devil, and he was a murderer from the beginning. So I, I am posing the question again to you. The person who wants Jesus to die, Jesus said is the devil. Are you saying the father you worship is the devil? Again, like Siraj, you are conflating terms. Okay. You are conflating terms. I think you are a little bit late to this debate. I quoted Isaiah 53. I quoted Genesis 22. I quoted Genesis 3.15 and many other verses. Malachi, Zechariah. So God wanted a sacrifice to forgive the sins of the world, of those who believe in him. When the Jews wanted to kill Jesus, were they trying to plot against him for that reason or for another one? It does not matter for whatever reason. No, Jesus it really said, matters. Listen, it really matters. Listen. Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray, showing that he does not have that understanding that he came to the world to die. And again, for you to understand clearly, in the book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 18, when Jesus was about to start his mission on the surface of the earth, he read out his manifesto to us. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to heal the blind, to cure the lepers, to deliver those people that are captive. And in his manifesto, there was nothing like I came to the world to die for your sins. And when Jesus accomplished, when he finished his job, he said in the book of John, chapter 17, verse 3 to 4, he said, This is the eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God. I have finished the work that you gave me to come and do. That time, Jesus has not been killed, but he has told us that he has finished the job, meaning that it is not the will of God that he should come to the world to die for the sin of man. You show him that Rather, scripture. It is the Jesus devil's said he's come to die. that Jesus should be killed. That one. I am <laughs> telling you again, you <laughs> said the will of the Lord is that Jesus should be killed and die. And Jesus is saying the will of that person that wants him to die is the devil. Are you acknowledging that the God you serve, that you call the Father, is the devil? No. From, many things from, the, from, the time, from that time Jesus began, I'm, I'm, I'm going to read Matthew 16 from verse 21. From that time Jesus began to show his disciples 
that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed. And be killed. Three times I'm going to repeat it. And be killed. No. Is it clear? Is it clear? So we are conflating. I'm sorry, sir, but you are conflating terms. Yes, God the Father and God the Son wanted this death. But they did it through the means of the wickedness of the Jews and the Romans. That was the way to provide forgiveness of sins and to show the sinfulness of the world. Okay, again. No, okay, no, you have buried yourself. No, man. I'm talking about You have buried yourself. No, no, you have buried right. yourself. I'm sorry, sir. It's not okay. It's I not okay. From comments, you have concluded. I said okay to your comment. And I want to make my remark. I'm not saying I agree with what you say. That's not the meaning of my okay. So no, so you is, quote the Bible for one thing, and I'm quoting the Bible to so disprove you. Is, and now the Bible that, is not that, enough for that, you. That, that Sorry. Is, that is the reason why the Bible is giving us conflicting information. Everybody listening, I want to start a mission. Every president, every of every head of states want to tell the people they, what they wanted to do. Jesus read his manifesto in his manifesto as the Messiah. Messiah was not to come and die. When he finished the work, when he came to the world, he said, I have finished. He was not dead. And when the Jews were trying, he went to God and said, save me from being killed. It was not the will. He, Jesus was not willing to die. And he was looking for somebody to, that would save him from death. Jesus understood from the book of Psalm, chapter 20, verse 6, that God had already told him that the Messiah would be saved. Whoa. Messiah will be saved according to Psalm um, 20 verse 6 and he was expecting that that should that Jesus happen. Said. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, a moment. That when the Jews were about to kill him, him, Jesus made them to understand that they were only trying to carry out the will of their father. And the Christian are telling are you gonna that finish? the will of God is that are you gonna Jesus finish? Died, and Jesus is saying that father whose will is that he should die is the devil. Okay. And the Father, whose will is that it should be saved, is God. That is what it means. Yeah, good. So now the nine Matthew 16, the nine Isaiah 53, the nine basically the Bible. I'm quoting the Bible at convenience. Basically, he's also quoting to defend himself the Gospel of John. When the Gospel of John, Jesus is saying that he will depart this world. He will depart this world. When did that happen? When he was crucified and then risen. And then risen because you can read that. You can read the crucifixion. He was before Pilate. He was crucified and risen. Buried and risen. Don't quote me, John, when the Gospel of John is confirming the crucifixion, the resurrection and the ascension. Now that you love, do you love to quote the Psalms, let me read Psalm 16. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. Psalm 16. As for the saints, I began from the beginning. In the land they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those who run after another God shall multiply. The drinks, sufferings of blood I will not pour out or take their names on my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my Lord. The lines have fallen for me in the pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. Bless the Lord who gives me counsel in the night. Also, my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me because he's at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my glad is, is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol or let your Holy One see corruption. When that was quoted, when that was quoted, after the resurrection, the Apostle Peter quoted this verse as confirming the death of Christ and the resurrection. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Who is at the right hand of the Father? Christ. When did he go to the right hand of the Father? When he was risen. If we say he was risen, we imply that he was crucified. 
therefore recent. So you like to quote the Psalms. Yes, I'm quoting the Psalms for you. Please do a better job, man. <laughs> so he has quoted Psalms for us. And what is funny is that even the book of Psalms that was revealed to, Jew, to the Jews, they never understood that this passage is talking about resurrection. It's not about their hatred for Christ, but the Jews themselves knew that the essence of Messiah coming to the world is not to die, neither to be resurrected, but for him to pass the message and rescue the Jews. Just like Jesus was quoting the book of Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1, which he quoted in the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 18, verse 18 that we quoted the other time. Again, I want to go back to my question. At the time that the Jews wanted to execute Jesus, they, Jesus made them to understand, you are willing, you are trying to do the will of your father. And he told them, at that point in time, the will of the person you are trying to do is the devil. And you are telling me that, why did Jesus come to the world? You say he came to die for our sin. But Jesus is saying, it is the will of the God, it is the will of the devil for him to come to the world to die. That is what Jesus is making us to understand. Simple question. Very simple question. Okay. Simple question. When those Jews in the Gospel of John plotted against Jesus, did they do it because they wanted, they considered him the Messiah and the sacrifice that will bring salvation to his to their people? Whatever reason, the Jews try to do that. At that point in time, Jesus made them to know that Abraham was not a murderer. That the intention, the will of whom they are trying to carry out is the devil. And you are saying why? That they, that's what they say. Why? When Jesus prayed, why? 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 Not as my will, but your will should be done. What is the will of God? Is it for Jesus to die or for Jesus to live? We are saying the will of God is for Jesus to live. And Jesus is confirming it is the will of the devil for him to die. And once you say that Jesus came to the world to die for our sin, and it is the will of your father who you refer to as God in Christianity, Jesus is saying that God is what? The devil. That is what Jesus said. No matter what, you go back to the Old Testament and bring out any scripture or whatever, the Jews themselves never have the understanding that the Messiah will come and die for the sins of man. Jesus was not aware of this. Even the devil knows that the Messiah cannot be killed. And that was why during what? the tradition, he referred to uh, Psalm chapter 91 saying that if since you are the messiah you can jump up this cliff because it has been written that what the angel will save you everything the messiah cannot be killed again uh, psalm david said in 20 that's psalm 20 verse 6 the messiah will be saved in the book of hebrew chapter 7 verse chapter 5 verse 7 even the writer of Hebrews said, in the days of Jesus, he offers strong cries and tears to the person who can save him from death. And he was hard. What does it mean? It means that when Jesus was crying to God to save him from death, God answered his prayer. When God answered your prayer that you should not die, what does it mean? It means he rescued you. It was not the intention of God that he should come to God to die. It was not the intention of God that woman being should die for the sins of another person. Let me it is paganism. have you finished? Let me bury him again and again and again one more time. He he didn't have any problem going to John, I think six, right? When the Jews accused please get away. Uh, when the Jews Yes, please. Holy Spirit, it's a session. Yeah. 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 yeah, and can you do it for him as well? He needs help. Yeah, but, yeah, well, it's a bit late. It's better not to say sorry and do things well. Anyway, anyway, he quoted John 6. John 6, and it's when Jesus, if I'm not wrong, is when Jesus says to the Jews, like you are doing the will of your father, pointing to Satan, to the devil, 
because he was a liar from the beginning. He's not pointing he to the... A murderer, not liar. A murderer. That's John 10. That's John 10. If we are going... Yeah, he says in John 6, a liar is the father of lies. Is the yeah, then father of lies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Murderer and lies. Let's define murderer, okay? Because when we say that the devil is a murderer, we also have to acknowledge that God kills, right? But there's a difference why God kills and why the devil kills, right? Does your God kill people? Continue. No, 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 I'm asking you. Does God kill, your, does God kill people yes. according to your... Yay! Yes. Yay! Hey, hey, thank you. Conflating yes. terms like Sirash. <laughs> okay. Conflating okay. terms like Sirash. Now, because... No, 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 wait a moment. You had a long, long monologue and I'm going to finish. Now because, now because the devil is a murderer, now if God kills people, he's like the devil. But that works for both religions. He's a mind. The difference is why God kills people and why Satan kills people. And that's the same thing that happened on the cross. So the Jews and the Romans wanted to kill Christ for one reason, but, but, but God the Father sent his son to the cross for another reason. The Jews, nor the Romans, wanted to kill Jesus because they, say, they sought the salvation of the world. Not at all. Yet the Father wanted that sacrifice to bring salvation to the, lo to the world. So don't conflate one motivation, one motif, and another, and another. So just bear in mind, bear in mind that when you conflate murderer with God, that works for, for your religion as well. Let me explain you something very simple. He went to chapter 6 of the Gospel of John and even onwards. I'm going to tell you something. When we go to John 5, Jesus had a conflict with the Jews because he performed a miracle on Sabbath when Sabbath was a holy day. He saved a man from a, from a disease. Then when the Jews noticed that a man was killed on Sabbath, they wanted to kill Jesus. They encountered Jesus and he said, in the same way my father works, that means caring for creation, for creation right now, so do I, so I care for creation. And they, they, those Jews said, you are making yourself equal, equal to the Father. What did Jesus say? No, I'm not making myself equal to the Father. What Jesus said is like, in the same way the Father has the right to judge the living and the dead, so do I. In the same way the Father gives eternal life, so do I, and in the same way, you honor the Father, you have to honor me. That's why the Jews wanted to kill Christ. That's not the reason why the Father sent the Son to the cross. Stop conflating terms. If you quote, if you quote the Gospel of John, quote chapter 5 as well. If you quote Matthew, quote Matthew chapter 16 as well. No, initially you asked me a question, which you never answered, by the way. What a liar! <laughs> initially, people of Sodom and Gomorrah they were killed by God. Why? For their sinful acts. So God has reason for killing people, but for innocent persons. God will never kill an innocent person. He has been talking about what is the reason for the Jews trying to kill Jesus. We are not going to guess. We are going to listen to what Jesus said himself. Jesus said in Daniel chapter 8, he said, he said, but you now seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth which I have heard from God. Abraham was not a murderer. He said, you have seen, you can see clearly here that the only reason why the Jews 
tried to kill Jesus was because they ate the truth. They were trying, Jesus was trying to call them, take, call them back to God. And they, they, they distracted the truth. They wanted to kill him. So they ganged up against him. They ganged up against him. And I said, God knew that this thing will happen. And that is why he would say, he will save his Messiah. He's going to save it. I have quoted it to you. God said he will save the Messiah. So at the point in time, when the Messiah now cried to God, save me from death. I say, God had his prayer, and he was saved from being killed. He was saved, he was never killed. And when they were trying to do this, he told them, the will of the person you are trying to carry out is your father, and that your father is the devil. And the will of the true God of Abraham, Isaac, Moses, and Jesus, is for Jesus to live. And that is why in Quran chapter 3, verse 55, Allah says, and the Jews, they plan. The Jews plan. And Allah also plans. And the best of the planner is Allah. You can see that with the instigation, with the attempt and the scheme to kill Jesus, Allah says, he saved him. And that is why he said, they say in both, we see Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, the apostle of God. They killed him not, neither crucified him. But so it was made to appear to them too. For those who differ therein are full of doubt concerning this. What they utter is mere conjecture. So anywhere in the passages where you read about Jesus being killed, or he prophesied about his death and he being killed, this is forgery. It is forgery. It has nothing to do with the Messiah. And it's not just because the Quran is saying so. It is because it is not consistent with the teachings of the previous prophets. He talked about Isaiah 53. He talked about Psalm 22. He talks about various. How come the Jews that this book was revealed to never understood it to mean that the Messiah will come and die? How come they do not understand that somebody will come and die for their sin? Why is it that it is a Christian? So it is like somebody again who is shooting an arrow, after shooting an arrow, drawing a circle around it to make the arrow look at the center. You are very, at the very doctrine, simple. Doctrine. Are you going to finish? You are trying to legitimize your doctrine, a doctrine that came from her, using the, previous, the teachings of the previous prophet. Okay, now you are saying that the Jews never expected a messiah that would die for the sins of others is that right yes okay which jews are you talking about i am talking about the children of israel the followers of moses okay okay yeah the ones who live today right from the time of moses till date and let me tell you the reason why no it's a simple answer i want yes. a straight it's a simple question the i jews want a straight religion, not straight the Jews who follow Judaism, they never believe the Messiah is to come to the world to die. The same Jews that don't accept Muhammad as a prophet. That is not the, that the is same not Jews that don't accept Muhammad as a prophet. The same Jews that don't accept Muhammad as a prophet. Are they valid? Is their criteria? What a morning. And I'm going to answer. And I'm going to answer you. And I'm going to answer you all. Oh, he's afraid. I'm answering his question. Hey, I'm going to answer, guys. Look, look. I'm going to fry him like Kentucky Fried Chicken. I'm going to fry his Takiya Fried Chicken once and for all. He's quoting. He's using. He's using the Jews. Which Jews? The ones who reject Muhammad. But when we go to the Jews, let me go to one Jew, to one Jew, John the Baptist. When John the Baptist saw Jesus coming, what did he say about him? The Lamb. Here is the Lamb of God. The Lamb. Pointing again to that Lamb, the servant of the Lord in Isaiah 53, that will be crushed for our sins. Is very simple. Very simple. Isaiah 53. He's saying that the servant of the Lord will be crushed for the transgressions of others. Amen. You are misquoting the Bible and, like Siraj, conflating terms. So you are saying that an innocent person cannot die. Why? Because God never ordered for humans to practice 
sacrifice, human sacrifice. But God said that he is allowed to do that. The crucifixion of Jesus is not the, is not the obedience we practice by sending people to the, to the cross. Sending people to the cross. And you quoted John 8. Let me tell you something. He quoted John 8 till the point he wanted. But I'm going to continue with John 8. John 8, 48. The Jews answered him, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Do you think Jesus had a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it and he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews say to him, now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died as you did the prof as did the prophets. Yet you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died and the prophets died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, if I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father who glorifies me, of whom you say, he is our God, but you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that you do not know him, I would be a liar like you, but I do not, but I don't know him, but I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews say to him, you are not yet 50 years old and you have seen Abraham. Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Why do you, why do you read John 8 and you don't read this part? Why don't you read this part? Why don't you read this part? Why do you conflate terms? You speak about the death of innocent, but God is saying that no others can die for the sins of others. But Christ is the lamb that was promised but that same God, as I have proved from Genesis 3.15, from Isaiah 53, when I told you John the Baptist, he was a Jew. He was the last of the prophets in the old covenant. And when he saw Christ, he called him the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God. What was a lamb for the Jews? That animal that was provided for a sacrificial system is clear. It's clear. Stop cherry, pe cherry picking. It's clear, man. It's clear. Okay. He has succeeded in saying many things in relevant to what you are talking about. I came here. Irrelevant, John 8. He asked me the question, who are the Jews? I have told him. He decided to went another way to say the Jews, the same Jews never believe in Muhammad. We are not talking about that. I can have a time to debate with you concerning that. I can have another time to debate with you concerning whether Jesus is God or anything. What we are talking about is this. The will of the person that wants Jesus to die. Somebody said Jesus came to world to die for our sins. Whose will was that? Jesus said the will of the person that wanted him to die is the devil. That is what we are talking about. When Jesus finds himself in this problem, he prays to God with strong cries and tears. Did God answer his prayer? The answer is yes. When God answered the prayer of somebody who want God to rescue him from death, so what it means that he did not die because it wasn't the intention. You talked about dying for the sins of another. Of course, God in his mercy does not want somebody to die for the sins of anybody. He made us to understand clearly what we need for repentance. We do not need the blood of anybody to, to, uh, uh, to be forgiven of any sin. Even during the time of the New Testament, the Old Testament, the reason why uh, the sacrifice of lamb or whatever was being done was to atone for the minor sins. Splitting of blood does not atone for the major sins. 
This is what God says. And what God requires is for you to repent. If you go to Isaiah 43, verse 25, you are going to see the provision of God. Repent unto him. Isaiah 55, verse 6 to 7, said the same thing. Repentance atone for your sin. It does not need the blood of anybody. And that is why whatever religion is preaching that God's intention is that Jesus will come to the world to die for our sins. That God, who they call the Father, is the devil. I am not the one saying so. It was Jesus that was saying so. Whatever be the situation, at the time when they were, when they were about to execute their plan, Jesus made them to understand that you want to carry out the will of your father, the murderer from the beginning. He ate the truth right from the time Jesus was born and was commissioned as the Messiah. Satan has ever been his enemy and the intention is for him to be killed, but God saved him to glorify him. Because when somebody is crucified on the cross, the person is a cause. The person and a cause is the devil. And that is why whoever wrote the book of John, chapter 3, verse 15 to verse 14 to 16, he made a fallacy of misrepresentation when he was saying that when Moses was in the wilderness with his people and they were being beaten by a snake and they were dying. And God says, for you to get over this problem, make a bronze with the representation of the serpent and put it on the on the cross on, 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 on the road. And when you look at it, you will be cured, you will be saved. And the person now came and said, in John chapter 3, verse 15, he says, as God says to Moses about the about the mortal serpent. That anybody who look up unto the servant, once that he said the son of man will also be lifted up, and whoever lift, uh, look at him, he will be saved. It's a, it's a fallacy of misrepresentation because the person that was supposed to be put on the cross is the devil, not the God. If God were to say make representation of the lamb, as you said, or he made symbolism for Moses to make anything, we all know that in the case of Moses, it was the serpent that was biting them and killing them. It was the adversary. It was the enemy. And God says, kill it, make a bronzing uh, image of it, hang it on the, on, the, on the stake when you look at it, which is a symbol of victory symbol of victory against the devil. And lastly, before I allow you to talk, God understands how to atone for the sins of man. You remember in the book of Exodus, chapter 32, from verse 32, when the children of Israel, when they, when they, when they, when they worship the image of the calf, and God wanted to destroy them, and Moses was pleading for, for the children of Israel, he said, God Almighty, please, if it is possible, forgive these people. But if you not forgive them, then make me, he said, take me, blot out my name from the book of life. What was the response of God? He said, no way. I will never blot you out from the book of life. I will only blot out the wicked people from the book of life. The reason why, what God is telling us to understand is this. Anybody that sins, you are going to be responsible for your sin. Nobody can carry the sins of another. Moses tried it, God said no. And the only reason why God rejected him was not because Moses was a sinner or anything. God stated the reason. He said, it is only the sinners that will be blotted out from the book of life, not the innocent person. Jesus was innocent. He couldn't have been the one on the cross to be crucified. Yeah, again, mambo jambo all the time, mambo jambo all the time, mambo jambo all the time. The Bible is clear. Genesis 3.15, God speaks about that someone from the seed of the woman will be crushed and he will repair in that way what the serpent caused. He quoted the Gospel of John. I'm going to be short because this guy is going in circles. It's a very simple thing. So the Jews say to him, what sign do you show us for doing these things? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. 
when therefore, listen to these guys, because he's quoting the Gospel of John. When therefore he was raised from the dead, John chapter 2, when he was raised from the dead, he disciples remember that he had said this, and they believed the scripture, which you don't believe, obviously, and the word that Jesus had spoken, which you obviously don't believe and even don't know. Okay, so you say that the Gospel of John, you wanted to base your case on the Gospel of John. I quoted you Matthew 16, but he was speaking about the temple of his body. His body, his body. When therefore he was raised from the dead, he was raised from the dead. What is this implying, sir? Raised from the dead. Before John 6, before John 8, before John 15, before John 17, we have John 2. John 2. And John 2 is saying, when therefore he was raised from the dead. So, uh, he has spoken, and I want to say something. And that when the devil wants to make a doctrine, he knows how to falsify the doctrine of the previous prophet. And Have I read to, John, two re listen, John 2 well? I'm going to demonstrate this thing to you. But first, everybody should understand. Whatever is written in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, book of Hebrew, or New Testament in totality, Unfortunately, Jesus never had chance to certify whether this was what they wrote is about him. Moses, we are told, wrote, read and wrote the law, the Torah. Jesus never had this opportunity. Where I'm going is this. When the devil wants to create a doctrine, he only needs legitimacy. And the writers in the New Testament, that has always been the legitimacy they are looking for. They want legitimacy from the book of the uh, Old Testament. My brother, let me give you a shot. When God was demonstrating to us what is his provision about salvation for man, can woman be die for the sin of another person? Can woman be take the sin of somebody away? God told us through Isaiah. Because I would rather believe in David. I would rather believe in Isaiah. I would rather believe in Solomon than believing in John, Matthew, Paul, or anything. Now, okay, God okay, God, guys, God, God, very simple, God, God, very simple. God, God, yeah, God, God, now you're going to listen. God, you're going to listen. God told us in Isaiah chapter 59 from verse 20 and 21. I will read it out. God says in Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 59, verse 21, he says, And the Redeemer shall come to Zion. And unto them that turn away from transgression, from sin. <laughs> Again, and the Redeemer shall come to Zion. And unto them that have turned away from sin. As for me, this is my covenant of death. Say the Lord, my spirit that is upon thee, and my word which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth not out of mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed, says the Lord from henceforth and forevermore. What is God telling us here? The only way human being can be saved is that you have to do the work of repentance. When you, when you repent from sin, God says he's going to come to your rescue. Did you know how this world was corrupted by the devil? Do you know how this package that women being are responsible for their for their forgiveness of sin? How it was distorted and the devil preached this into Christianity. It was the devil used Paul. Uh, how did he use Paul? In the book of Romans, we are told in the book of Romans, again, listen, in that Isaiah, Isaiah told us that the Redeemer will come to Zion only when they have repented from their sin. But now, look at the way the devil twisted this from the mouth of Paul in the book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 26. We are told, verse 28, look at how Paul twisted this and he says, okay, uh, 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 verse 20, he says, and so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion 
the deliverer and shall turn ungodliness away from Jacob. Is that what Isaiah said? No. Isaiah said it, uh, the deliverer will come to Zion. He did say it will come out of Zion. Again, Isaiah said, God said to Isaiah that, and he will come to them when they have repented from sin. But here, Paul twisted it and said, he will come and take away their sin. That wasn't what God said. God yeah. was trying to build a situation whereby somebody will come and take away the sins of man. And that was why the doctrine of Jesus dying for our sin was implemented. And again, in the following verse, look at what he now says. In verse 27, he says, For this my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. Is that what Isaiah said in verse 21? No. And that is why Jesus said the other time, that the devil is a liar. Anytime he speaks, he lies. So he has used the doctrine of crucifixion to deceive the Christian. And Jesus knew this would happen. And that is why he says, anybody who believes that he came to the world to die is doing the will of the devil. He's doing the will of the devil because the, de the will of man is that righteousness of, righteousness of a righteous man shall be upon him. And the wicked of wickedness of man shall be upon him. Yeah, yeah. This is becoming boring, boring, boring. Thank you so much. Yeah. To die for the sins of the wicked. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, he came to me quoting the New Testament to disprove Christianity. Now that I quoted him, John chapter 2, now he's saying we can't rely on the New Testament. All this mambo jambo for nothing. At convenience, when the New Testament doesn't work for him, we can't trust the New Testament, then don't come to me quoting the New Testament to use it against Christianity. I'm sorry, but that's very dishonest. And that shows you that you are doomed. D-O-O-M-E-D. -E doomed. Before going to Isaiah, the chapter you quoted, let me read for you. I'm going to do it again and again and again. So simple. Yeah, and I will do it until your ears explode like dynamite like the sinners you are. All we like sheep have gone astray. Why all, all sheep have gone astray? Like sheep, why? Because we are all sinners. That's why no one can die for the sins of others. Isaiah is saying, all have gone astray. No one can save another by sacrificing because we all have gone astray. No one that has gone astray can save another that is already astray very simple he was oppressed well all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned everyone to his own way and the lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all the lord yahweh has laid on him on him the iniquity the sins of us of us sorry he was oppressed and he was afflicted Yet he opened not his mouth like a lamb, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep. Why lamb and sheep? Because these were the animals that were used to the sacrificial system. Ah, ah, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away and was for his generation who considered and as for his duration, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. Sorry? Of thy people, of my people. Yeah, for the transgression of my people. Now that the New Testament, he came, yeah, so he came with the New Testament to disprove Christianity. Now that I have smashed him and busted him cruelly with the New Testament, now, no, guys, the New Testament is corrupted. We can't trust him. Some using Isaiah 53 is this saying that the servant of the Lord will be crushed for the transgressions of the people? Crystal clear. Yes, 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 and yes. He was like a lamb. Not a lamb, but like a lamb because he was a human being. Like a lamb. So, I want to 
if what Isaiah said is true today, and my brother is be coming here next week, I will be very happy to discuss with you on Isaiah 53. I want to say categorically that Isaiah 53 has nothing to do about Jesus, but it was describing the situation of the children of Israel. I will be here to sort of discuss with you. Too. But before then, the the if that is saying, the no? understanding of the Jews and Bless the understanding of Isaiah, yeah. why will Isaiah be telling yes, us Yo. in Isaiah if Jesus is going to man. die for us? Like according like to that. Isaiah like 53, that. just two chapters I'm after that, Isaiah 55, we were told by Isaiah in verse 55, verse 6, and 7, he said, Seek ye the Lord, why he may be found. Call upon him, why he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man is torn. And let them return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will forgive their sins. Isaiah is telling us the way by which you can return back to God if you sin. If it has been the understanding that it is for so somebody to die, it's another thing entirely. But Isaiah does not have the understanding. And the people in Judaism never have that understanding. It is only the Christians. It is only the Christians that have the understanding. And as a result of that, I have told you where the doctrine came from. Jesus has made us to know everything about the doctrine of somebody that wants him to come and die for their sin. is from who? The devil. That is the summary of it. I will be very happy to go through all the prophecies in the Old Testament we told that the Christians have been talking about that talks about the crucifixion of Jesus. Isaiah 53, Psalm 22, Zechariah 12, the one you have been quoting everywhere, none of them ever talked about Jesus. None of them ever talked about Messiah. I am not saying this because I'm a Muslim, but the text. The, the book, the people that it was revealed to, either then or now, they never understood that the Messiah is to come and die for the sins of the world. They only understood that the Messiah is to come and establish the word of God and on earth and not any other thing. So this is my conclusion. Okay, your conclusion is that the New Testament doesn't count at convenience. At convenience you try, but then at convenience, you give it up. We use Isaiah the prophet. I'm going to read something. Sorry, something fell. I'm going to read for you Isaiah 42, verse 5. Thus says God the Lord who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness i will take you by the hand and keep you i will give you as a covenant for the people and a light for the nations i just want to make clear that he's using a singular and a plural i will give you as covenant for the people a light for the nations when he, sorry when he's talking about people he's singular he's talking about the people of israel and then light for the nations then we go to Isaiah 53 and he's talking about the requirements on how that will happen. Again, he was cut off the land, he was cut out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people, and they made his grave with the wicked. Very simple, transgression of my people, of my people, of my people. All like sheep have gone astray and have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. He was crushed and everything. When you read the New Testament, the New, Test the New Testament makes sense of Isaiah 42 and Isaiah, 40 and Isaiah 53. Why? Because when Jesus was crucified, he provided salvation to his people 
and also because of the resurrection that was able to send the disciples to preach the gospel to the nations, people, Israel, and nations. So the New Testament is absolutely coherent with the book of Isaiah, with Zechariah, and so on. Thank you, mate. Okay. Good one. You screwed it. What's your name? Manuel. Manuel. So I lost my book. Yeah, we can meet next week. Yeah. So maybe we'll discuss about all those prophecies that you mentioned. Thank you very much. Emmanuel. Probably I say 53 because it's quite long. No. Uh, Emmanuel. Yes. I am Shakir. Shakir. Yes. Shakir or Shakir. Shakir. Shakira. Yes. Okay. Take care. It's real. Okay, Manuel. A rap house. So what day, Manuel? What day, Manuel? Okay, do you want me to be there? Or? Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, so what day, Manuel? What day, Manuel? Well, again, like Siraj, I got an encounter with another Muslim that accused Christianity of worshipping a pe pagan idolatry basically because we believe um, that it is okay for someone to die for the sins of another. Like Siraj, he conflated the idea that God uh, prohibited killing the children as burnt offerings to the pagan gods with the crucifixion. The crucifixion is not the sacrifice of children as burnt offerings to the pagan gods. I, he came to me with the New Testament and I used the New Testament to prove that Jesus spoke about his death and that was the way to provide redemption to the world. When I showed him that John 2, because he quoted John 2, no, he quoted the Gospel of John, but I went to John 2 to prove that John 2 says clearly that when Jesus spoke to the resurrection of the temple or to build up the temple, was talking about his body. And in John 2 says clearly that Jesus was talking about being raised from the dead. That's crystal clear that Jesus was assuming that he would die and then be risen. What happened when I say that? Now the New Testament is not reliable. He came to me with the New Testament until I crushed him using the New Testament. Then we went away again with the, with the Old Testament. Isaiah 53, Genesis 3.15. He did cherry picking at convenience. We will meet next week to talk about Isaiah 53. Anyway, it was exhausting. Sorry, <laughs> I can't see you. Um, and yeah, that's all. Thank you. God bless. Ah, it's you who yeah. say school yeah. him, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Stay, I stay, thought you were a Muslim. Yeah. Wait, 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 stay there. You have to do it again. You know why? Because the mic, the mic was dead. I crushed my voice. That doesn't mean that I crushed my voice for the sins of others. <laughs> that, that, that's the difference. That's the difference. How many did you have to take on? Sorry? Like, did they get to tag team? Did yeah, he was... Come in and go? Like, so Shakur or Shakira or Shakir... Was Shakira. Shakir. Shakina. Shakina. Shakir. I, he's a nice guy. I don't want to make fun of him. Oh, you're talking about this guy. Yeah. Um, what's his name? Shakir or Shakul. Shak okay, but you have to do a rap Siraj. of the edge. Siraj. That was the first. Then I got another debate with another one. About the same topic, basically. Uh, you took on two of them. It was very annoying, to be honest. <laughs> Okay, I got two debates today. One with Siraj, one with another guy. I don't want to misname him. Something like Shakir, probably. Yeah. Both debates were basically on the same topic. That the crucifixion or the belief, the Christian belief on the crucifixion is a kind of uh, pagan idolatry worship. I proved from the New Testament that Jesus said clearly that he, would, that he came to the world to die for the sins of others, and I proved that from the Old Testament. With Siraj, he quoted me Deuteronomy 12, 31, 
to say that Christians, when we believe in the crucifixion of Jesus, we believe in pagan idolatry. But based on Deuteronomy 12, 31, I say it clearly, that text is God saying to people, you shall not worship me like the nations because they sacrifice their children as burnt offerings. And what I say is, first of all, God is commanding something to people, not to himself, okay? The crucifixion was what God did, not what we are meant to do. The crucifixion of Jesus is not sacrificing children as burnt offering to the pagan gods. The crucifixion is Jesus, an adult, going willingly to the cross, not to the fire, and he wasn't sacrificed to the pagan gods, but to the Father. He annoyingly went into circles and... Dancing yeah. away. Yep, thank you, that's what I did. And then he went to the New Testament to prove that Jesus never claimed to die. Okay. He said that even uh, he wasn't on earth when he finished the work, so before the, the, the crucifixion there was no crucifixion. Though he spoke about crucifixion in the Quran as, as a false crucifixion. Anyway, uh, we spoke so many things. This is the conclusion. Isaiah 53 says clearly that the servant of the Lord was crushed for the transgression of the people. And that was the will of Yahweh, not a pagan god, Yahweh, Yahweh. And that's what Jesus fulfilled on Gethsemane. They misquoted Jesus when Jesus said on Geth in Gethsemane, uh, Father, not my will, but yours. Jesus is a human being. He didn't like the idea of bleeding out and suffering physically. Yet, 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 he did the will of the Father, which was to die on the cross. Jesus did it. Then, after the debate, I quoted Sahih Muslim, which says something like, Muslims will be saved because Allah will sacrifice Jews and Christians and Christians to redeem and save Muslims. And he ran away. He ran away. Yeah. And I also say that even though God commanded people not to, not to sacrifice people, that wasn't applicable to God because before Deuteronomy 12, there's John 3.15, where God says that one from the seed of the woman will crush the serpent, that's Satan, but in the process, he will suffer. That's the crucifixion, Isaiah 53. And in Genesis 22, I spoke about uh, when the angel of the Lord commanded Abraham to sacrifice his son, Isaac, and the angel of the Lord said to Abraham, you didn't spare my own so, your own son to me, to the angel of the Lord. And then Abraham said, in this place, God will provide a lamb. God will provide a lamb. John the Baptist recognized Jesus as the lamb of God, like in Isaiah 53. He will be like a lamb, like a sheep. Yeah. And then the other guy, Shakira, whatever his name is. Shakira, Shakira. <laughs> he came quoting me, Jesus, Jesus in the New Testament to disprove Christianity. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. And in, 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 the, in, in the middle of the way, she appeared to do something that I will never understand. Anyway. Uh, yeah, he quoted the same. The Garden of Gethsemane, yeah. Jesus saying, Oh, Father, not my will, but yours. And he told me, did the Father answer Jesus? And I said, yes, because Jesus said, not my will, but yours. And that's what God the Father answered. My will, my will, which Jesus prayed for. Your will, not mine. Okay, so there was a complete coherent narrative in Gethsemane. He tried to convince me that in the Gospel of John and in the New Testament, there's no, there's no anything that resembles the crucifixion. 
I quoted Matthew 16 when Jesus said that he will be killed. He will be killed. The Son of Man will be killed. Then he went to the Gospel of John, John 8. And I quoted John 5 before building the narrative to John 8 because he said, this is very funny, guys. This is really funny. He's so ridiculous. So ridiculous. Why, why, why? Yeah, learn this. He said that because Jesus called the Jews who wanted to kill him, you are like your father, the devil, because he was a murderer from the beginning, conflating this with the idea that God the Father wanted to kill Jesus. Therefore, the Father is like Satan. But I said to him, wait a moment. I believe in my religion that God kills people, lots of people. Do you believe that in your religion, Allah kills people? He had to say the truth. Yes, but the difference is that when, the, when Satan kills people, it's for, the, for a different reason. God kills people because he judges people. That's a different thing. So his system didn't work. Then he wanted to disprove Christianity from the New Testament, again using John. I quoted John 5, how Jesus uh, made himself equal to the Father. That's why the Jews hated him. That's why they wanted to kill him. He didn't answer for that. He didn't want to answer for that. And then he went to John 8, and he quoted just particular verses in John 8. And then I quoted the rest of chapter 8, when Jesus said that before Abraham was, he was, I am, I am. He didn't say anything about that, obviously. And then I went to John 2 saying, yes, you want to disprove that Jesus went to the cross. But in John 2, Jesus said that when he spoke about raising the temple, he was talking about his body, his body, his body. And the author of the gospel say, said that he did that because he was talking about being raised from the dead. Raised from the dead implies suffering death. It was at this point, guys, when he said, we can't rely on the New Testament. We can't rely on the New Testament. And then I said, then don't come to me using the New Testament to disprove Christianity. If we can trust in the New Testament, then we went to the Old Testament and I cooked him because Isaiah 53 speaks about the servant of the Lord being crushed. I'm going to go home. Then I spoke to two people, guy. I decide when to go home. Yeah. Next week. Next week. Yes. Do you want to meet me next week? Yeah, yeah, sure. What topic? Whatever you like. I don't mind. Jesus' divinity, just to, bring, just to bring some variety, okay? Because I'm a little bit. I, I will speak again about. Anyway. What's your name? Nas. Nas. Yeah. Uh, Manuel. Manuel. Nice to meet you. Yeah. So I debated uh, Siraj because I promised him that in two weeks I will debate him, and that's what I did today. Next week. Uh, and that's all. And I'm going to debate Nas and Shakir next week. Yeah, we love Nas. And this guy? This guy called, this guy said that I was running away because I want to go. I'm just joking, man. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I think you're jumping away. Line him up. 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 Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. God bless. Sorry. That was a good one. You said 30, 45 minutes. Jesse, we are on 5-3. Jesse, Jesse.